Shadow Light 11. When the otherworld man known as Wagen sat across from us within the dark golden mug tavern, two Greyhawk golem guards fling open the tavern's massive oakwood entrance door. Shafts of white sunlight flood into the tavern, disappearing as soon as the door closes behind the golems with a thunderous boom. The golems stand side by side on the far wall of the tavern with statuesque stillness. The torches burning in iron sconces mock the stillness of the unmoving golems with their own animated shadows. As soon as they remove their helms, I stare upon their massive mask-like faces, clay-like faces devoid of human emotion. One of the two golems possessed a familiar jagged white scar on his cheek. From the other side of the tavern, I leveled my finger at the golem's dim face. That golem, that thing, wears the scar of that red-headed young soldier we spoke to the day the militia left border town to hunt Mobius, never returning, I tell Bronn. Do you remember the young soldier's name? My twin ignored the golem. He paid more attention to the fold in the sleeve of his white linen shirt, his regal attire already having cost him half the coinage Mustard paid every week to employ us. His name was Dyden, my genius brother replies thoughtfully, needing only to hear a name once in order to memorize it. The golems march out of the golden tavern side by side as swiftly as they had entered the tavern only moments ago. The unemployed mercenaries gathered in the darkest corner of the tavern stare warily upon the entrance door. Their warriors' senses appearing to detect the impending doom. The hairs on my tattooed arm raise in alarm. Odd, I wonder why the golems would spy openly upon me, Wagen stated the obvious. Their handler, the mercenary Captain Menden, did not send them. My brother answers him in an unconcerned tone. Whoever created these golems is responsible for their spying eyes. Perhaps the council members who employed the golems control them, I suggest. Shifting uneasily in my seat, reaching my hand to the floor to touch the scabbard of my two-handed sword, a powerfully enchanted sword Mustarg had given me and my brother, Bronze Smirks, displaying the careless bravo of his hero of Mustarg. Who cares, brother? I recently beheaded four golems with Mustarg. These golem things are easily dispatched. The challenge lies in somehow capturing one of their bodies to prove their dark origins. The cursed golems we had skewered burst into flames as soon as their heads rolled off their shoulders. Wagen stared at the flat table surface, appearing deep in thought. When he lifted his chin to meet my curious gaze, he told me, Thomas told me he is certain that the golems are undead. He suspects a wizard other than Mobius used dark necromancy magic to create them. Thomas, a powerful wizard, his soul either trapped or willingly choosing to exist within Wagen's enchanted spear. Yet somehow our boss, a formidable swordsman I only respected for his deadly skill, appeared to willingly follow Thomas as his leader. A cool chill entered the tavern. The three of us turned in unison to gaze upon the cold source, a swarth of inky black fog so dark it appeared tangible wafted into the tavern. The unnatural fog drew shouts of surprise from the unemployed mercenaries. I drew my two-handed double-edged sword from its sheath with a sharp rasp of steel as Braun and Wagen readied their own weapons. The foreboding, frigid black extinguished the wavering torchlight and overhead lamplight as simply as a man would blow out a single candle flame. The tavern's interior fell into complete darkness. As the men in the tavern cursed at the black mist that had rendered all of us blind, unable to even see our own hands. What is happening? shrieked the unseen, normally jovial barkeep who had been full of joy a short time ago when she joined my brother and I with her sister for a drink. Thomas, from within Wagen's enchanted spear, unleashed rays of blinding white light in defiance of the dark mist. The wizard soul's divine-like light chased away the icy black fog as easily as a dog chases away a meddlesome cat from its territory. A hooded figure, hidden in darkness a moment ago, staggered backward before the presence of Wagen's blinding spear. The mysterious figure, wearing a feminine dress beneath her hooded cloak, stumbled backward to slam hard into the tavern's entrance door. She yelled in pain and surprise before turning frantically to push the door open with her trembling, terror-filled arms. Dim that light, I told Wagen, the spear's radiance preventing my brother and I from giving chase after the intruder. With the entrance door still open, I faintly detected the distant twang of a bowstring. A heartbeat later, I heard a familiar, we 